Hi there, I'm NSK, a real estate agent in Japan. In this video, I want to talk, I want to explain the process of how foreigners can buy a house using a housing loan. First off, it's important to check whether you can even qualify for a housing loan. Many people start looking for houses without realizing that they might not even be eligible for a housing loan. It doesn't make sense to search for a house when you can't actually buy one. The conditions for getting a housing loan vary de depending on financial institutions, but generally the minimum requirements for getting a housing loan are as follows. Permanent residency or Japanese citizenship. Annual income of at least 3 million yen. Work experience of at least 3 years. Uh, age between 20 and 79. No overdue insurance premiums, payment of taxes in Japan, not on leave such as maternity leave, no financial mishaps, unpaid credit card bills, unpaid mobile phone bills, unpaid debt, or payment delays. Without permanent residency or Japanese citizenship, you, you usually can get a housing loan. However, some financial institutions, SMBC Prestia Bank, might consider you if you have a long-term stay visa, but you would still need to give cover a 20% down payment and various costs. For Mizuho Bank, if you are in the process of applying for permanent residency, uh, it seems you can apply for a housing loan even with a long-term stay visa. SBI Shinsei Bank requires the applicant's spouse to be a Japanese citizen or a permanent resident and to act as a co-guarantor for the applicant. Finally, a, at Suruga Bank, it seems you might not need permanent residency if the housing loan process can be conducted in Japanese. Now, about paying taxes in Japan. If if you are living abroad and not paying taxes in Japan, or if you are a U.S. military personnel living in Japan, but not paying taxes, you won't be eligible for a housing loan. Also, if you have any tax arrears, you'll need to settle those before applying. Regarding annual income, most institutions won't consider you unless you earn at least 3 million per year. This is because the loan limit for housing loan is typically around 6 to 7 times your annual income. With on an income below 3 million, you'll find it hard to find properties to buy. Even if you do find, find something, it's likely to be quite old or small and not very desirable. Of course, it, in some regions, you might still find good properties, but it's tough around Tokyo, including Chiba, Kanagawa, and Saitama. Once your income crosses around 4 million yen, you might be able to secure a loan of 7 to 8 times your income due to payment ratios. Also, keep in mind that if your couple or parent-child duo, your combined income can be considered. So as long as it adds up to over 3 million yen, it should be fine. Regarding work experience, you generally need to have worked at the same company for at least three years. Some of financial institutions might be more lenient if you've changed jobs but um having a work history of at least three years is generally a basic requirement in terms of the age you can generally start applying for a housing loan from the age of 20. housing loan can stretch up to 35 years um and some sometimes even 50 years though it's not recommended <laughs> so if you are able to apply by around age 44, you can go for the full of 35 years. Considering loans need to be paid off by around age 79, around 60 might be the upper age limit for applying. Concerning overdue health insurance premiums, regular employees at companies usually have social insurance where the company pays the premiums. So there's usually no worry about overdue payments. However, self-employed individuals and non-regular workers often have national health insurance. 
which is called kokho. People in the in these categories might have overdue payments, so be cautious. If there are overdue payments, there will be a mark on your insurance card indicating that. If that happens, make sure to pay it off promptly. If you're currently an employee taking a leave of absence like maternity or childcare leave can make uh, lenders see you as not working. So I would recommend that kind of people on leave like that holds off on applying for a loan. Even if you can manage to secure a loan, you might not get the amount you're hoping for. And it might even be required to have a substantial amount of savings. Lastly, let's talk about financial mishaps. Basically, if you have a financial mishap, you won't be able to get a loan for about five years. Financial mishaps typically stem from a delayed or uh, unpaid credit card bills, mobile phone payment and such. Not paying off debt or delaying repayments can also lead to financial mishaps. If you want to check whether you have any financial mishaps, you can request information from JICC, CIC, or the Japanese Bankers Association. I've added the links in the description, so feel free to check them out. So those are the basic requirements for applying for a housing loan. The next step is pre-approval process. While many, many people start hunting for houses right away, I would recommend going for pre-approval first. Pre-approval is a sort of a preliminary evaluation done before the actual loan application process. The result of the bank's pre-approval is usually quite reliable and can be seen as a green light to getting the housing loan. Without this evidence, even if you find a good house you like, it could delay the whole buying process. Uh, for pre-approval, you typically need your residence res registration ID and documents proving your income, like income and tax certificates withholding tax statements and such. This is the certificate of tax payment. Also, this is one, this one, this different year. This is called Gensen Choshu in Japanese. Probably those of you who have been in Japan for a long time know this document very well. So nowadays you can easily uh, apply online. I've included links to some banks' online pre-approval applications uh, in the description, so check those out. Depending on the pre-approval, you might need to, you might need the details of the property. It's a good idea to get a sales drawing, sales sheet of a new building, newly built properties in your price range from the real estate agent to use in your pre-approval process. The property you use for pre-approval doesn't necessarily have to be uh the one you end up buying so no worries some people might have names too long for online forms or other cir circumstances that prevent online sub submissions in such cases using physical application form is a good idea i've included links to some banks pre-approval application forms in the description so please make sure to check them out as well Next, um, it's time to search for properties. Once you have received pre-approval, you can start looking for the actual property you buy. Uh, here's uh, where you need to be careful about a few things. First, the price. Generally, it's not recommended to choose a property that's more expensive than, than what you are pre-approved for. The chance of getting pre-approved for a higher loan amount during the final approval process is lower than during the pre-approval. And you might not be able to secure the property if it's over approved amount. Second, consider whether it's, it's a condominium or detached house, as the costs can differ significantly. Condos typically comes with monthly repair and maintenance fee on top of your mortgage payment Actually, condos or older ones tends to have higher costs, and while the mortgage payments might be smaller to those for a detached house, you have these additional expenses 
each month. So it's good to think of condos as being a bit more expensive. Third, for newly built detached houses in Tokyo, uh, especially 20 in 23 special ones, you might need to factor in the cost of solar panels. Starting from April 2025, major builders are required to install solar panels on roof of newly built attached houses. It's a good idea to can remember these extra expenses as well. Those are the key points to watch out for. Generally, it's a good idea to think about the following conditions when searching for a house. First of all, areas, size of the house, condo or detached house. If it is a detached house, whether it's two-story or three-story, new or used, how close it is to a train station. Do you need parking space? Do you need a garden? Uh, what's the ideal price range? Consider monthly payments. Different people have different preferences for narrowing down their criteria, but the but be careful not to be too strict with the requirements as that could make it harder to find a house. It's, it's usually better to choose from houses that meet your criteria to some extent. When looking for a house, it's a good idea to use websites like Home, Sumo, and At Home. I've included links in the description below, so please check them out. However, most of the property information is outdated, and some properties might already be sold out. So it's not the best search method, actually. Real estate agents like us search for properties on a site accessible only to professional called Reigns. So the best way to search for property is actually to ask a real estate agent. Reigns is very useful because it includes not only residential properties but also land investment properties and even a factories. Once you have found a house you want to buy, you make an offer. Make an offer means showing the seller that you are interested in buying. Especially, you will find out the offer application form with your name, address, property details, and the loan related information and send it to the seller or the seller's agent via tax. This is when you can discuss price, negotiations, and the contract date. Many clients expect significant discounts in the range of millions of of yen, but in reality, properties that allow for such large discounts usually aren't the most favorable ones. Good properties can sell without offering discounts, so getting discounts can be challenging. Also, if you are a cash buyer, you, you're more likely to negotiate discounts. So if that's your goal, uh, consider paying with cash. Additionally, uh, the ability to negotiate discounts can vary depending on whether you're dealing with a real estate agency or private seller. Typically, you can get a around a million discount on a newly built detached house. Next comes the explanation of important terms and the contract signing. The explanation of important terms is a detailed description of the property before the contract is signed. You will need to be satisfied with with this explanation before you can sign a contract, so you can't do it after the contract is signed. This is called the uh, explanation of important terms. Rather than thinking of it, of it like on an instruction manual for the house, think of it as a um, discussion about the condition of the property. After receiving this explanation of important terms, you will proceed to sign the purchase contract. This is the purchase and sales agreement. It is actually around eight pages long, so it's not very long. Generally, you'll be asked for a earnest money deposit when signing a contract. The earnest deposit is like a cancellation deposit. If you want to cancel a contract for personal reasons, you will forfeit this deposit as a compensation for the cancellation. On the other hand, if the seller, that is the other party, wants to cancel, they must return the earnest deposit you paid and also paid you the same amount. This earnest deposit is credited towards the 
total purchase price during the settlement. So if you're financing the entire purchase with a housing loan, this deposit remains in your account after the settlement. The earnest money deposit is usually around 5% to 10% of the property price. For 20 million house, it would be around 1 million. And for a 50 million house, it would be around 2.5 million. Just to give you an idea. If you can't afford it right away, consider saving up or borrowing from your friends or relatives. Also, you need to affix a stamp called INSHI on the contract for properties ranging from 10 million to 50 million, you need a 10,000 yen stamp. This is where you place your uh, stamp. For properties ranging from 50 million yen to 100 million yen, you need a 30,000 yen stamp. Generally, the real estate agency provides the stamp, but uh, since it's a cost a bond buyer, a buyer, so make sure to have this amount ready. After the purchase contract is signed, you will definitely apply for the formal loan approval. The reason for doing this promptly is to avoid delaying the settlement and hand over date. The formal approval process requires many documents in addition to the purchase contract and explanation of important terms. You need additional documents related to yourself like employment verification, monthly salary statements, etc. Formal approval process can vary for different people, but typically results are obtained in about one to three weeks, not only during the formal approval process, but also until the property purchase is completely finalized. Try not to make out any additional loans such as credit card loans, car loans, personal loans, etc. Generally, the formal approval process allows for a detailed ex examination of the property. Depending on the situation, your personal borrowing history and credit information might also be checked, so stay cautious. If the formal approval is granted, the next step is to update your address. Specifically, you will need to update your resident registration to your new address. At the same time, update your registered seal, income, information to your new address. You do this because financial institutions like banks want to conduct the loan contract at your new address. Generally, I personally think that very few financial institutions conduct loan contract at your old address. After changing your address, it's time to finalize a loan contract. At this point, you need your new address, residence, registration, seal, certificate, in control may, and uh, stamp. Uh, the process usually takes about two hours, while more financial institutions are moving online. Many still prefer face-to-face -face meetings for a loan contract. During the loan contract, your essentially in entering into an agreement to borrow money. However, make sure you thoroughly understand basics before they explain everything to you, as it might be overwhelming or otherwise. Furthermore, during the loan contract, aside from the borrowing amount, uh, interest rate can vary depending on the financial institution. Currently, most financial institutions in Japan have a set housing loan interest rate quite low. City banks, online banks, and others often have uh, rates below 1%. And even re regional banks offer rates around 1%. Government-backed financial institutions like Flat35 offer rates below 2%. So honestly, I think you'll find with any of them. However, the financial institutions you will choose might depend on factors like your annual income or the company you work for. So it's, it's not recommended to select based solely on, on the interest rate. At the end of the loan contract, they'll probably talk about group credit life insurance. This insurance covers the remaining debt, which is your housing loan. In case the debt uh, passes away, in other words, the outstanding loan amount will be paid off by the insurance. Generally, you can join as long as you don't have a severe illnesses. Also, recently, there are options available that covers cases like cancer, heart attack, and strokes. However, keep in mind that more options you add, the higher
the interest rate and cost might become. Once the loan contract is successfully completed, there's the execution, the closing, in other words, uh, settlement, property transfer, and handover phase. For newly built detached houses, there is usually a site visit before this where the seller makes any necessary repairs. On the closing day, the first thing that happens is the transfer of ownership under the supervision of the uh, judicial uh, scrivener. This involves a transferring the property ownership from the seller to the buyer using a powerful attorney the document. After this, you go to the bank and distribute the money that has been transferred into your account to the seller. Intermediately, judicial scriveners and the other relevant parties. Once everything is done, you will receive the keys. In the case of a full loan, money equivalent to the earnest money deposit should remain in your account. So that's the process of buying house with a loan. Quite complex, right? I've I've tried to explain it in more detail than the video I've made about three years ago so i hope it's helpful for most people buying a house is a once in a lifetime decision to avoid making mistakes or being deceived make sure to gain a solid understanding of the process lastly let's uh, quickly calculate uh, the monthly mortgage payment for different price ranges first regarding the various costs for purchasing home there's the agency fee, which is around 3% plus 60,000 yen plus tax. Financial institution fee, which is 2.2% of the total borrowing amount, sometimes included in the rate. Uh, ownership transfer cost, which is about 50,000 yen. And restoration fee, which is applying to newly built houses, usually around 150,000 yen stamp fee which is varied based on the property price property tax uh which is proportional payment for the period between january 1st or april 1st and and the ownership transfer date settlement of outstanding management fees and reserve funds for condominiums the buyer covers any unpaid fees if the seller owes any. Compliance cost. If you use the flat 35 housing loan, you need a compliance certificate around, which is around 100,000 yen and some more. Now let's calculate monthly repayment amount for different price ranges. Assuming an agency fee of about 3% plus 60,000 yen plus tax, a repayment period of 35 years, fixed property tax of 100,000 yen registration fee, including title preservation trust fee of about 400,000 yen and a fixed interest rate of 1% for, for a bank housing loan used to purchase a used detached house. For a 20 million yen property, the total cost is about 21.75 million yen. The monthly payment is about 61,000 yen. For a 30 million property, the total cost is about 32.31 million yen. The monthly payment is about 91,000 yen. For a 40 million property, the total cost is about 42.86 million. The payment is about 121,000 yen. For a 50 million property, the total cost is about 53.42 million. The monthly payment is about 150,000 yen. For 60 million property, the total cost is about 64.04 million yen. The monthly payment is about 180,000 yen. For 70 million property, the total cost is about 74.60 million yen. Monthly payment is about 210,000 yen. For on an 80 million property, the total cost is about 85.50 million. Monthly payment is about 
240,000 yen. For a 90 million property, total cost is about 95.71 million yen. Monthly payment is about 270,000 yen. For a 100 million yen property, that total cost is about um, 106.27 million yen monthly payment is about 299,000 yen if you're considering buying selling or renting out real estate in japan please feel free to contact us using the contact information below thank you for watching and please make sure to subscribe our channel for more information